second. Okay, I think it is recording. Perfect. Uh, and now I'll try to share my screen. If you want to follow the slides that we are going to send, um, they're under the slides here link. So that's exactly the slides that we are going to go through. Perfect. Can you see my screen? Okay, perfect. So I'm going to kick off. Um, so yeah, as we said, um, we are going to be your GitHub instructors for today. Uh, and I'm sure there are many, many other people uh, on the uh, on the Turing Slack that will be able to help with more complex questions. Uh, but yeah, we will talk a bit about GitHub One, like um, how it's used for collaboration, for version control, for project management. Um, and um, this is uh, building on materials that have been developed by many other people, including Malvika and Kirsty and others. Oops. So just as a quick introduction, for those of you who might not be so familiar with the Turing Way, uh, the Turing Way it is a community-led guide. Um, we like to think of it as um, an online book, like a reference where you can find all sorts of information as a community, um, as a very distributed um, collaborative environment where we come together through collaboration cafes and uh, different training sessions and other open discussions. And um, we advocate for culture change. And um, the main things that uh, we kind of have at heart are um, open science, reproducibility, ethical approaches and collaboration. Um, the Turing Way has been going on for many years, for about, I think, five years, and it was funded by the, uh, U, uh, by the UK government through the uh, AI for Science and Government Strategic Priorities, and the aim was to help change um, the, uh, the culture of data science, and a bit less than five years down the line, um, We've had more than 300 chapters written by more than 450 contributors um, from all continents. And this is spanning um, the different sectors from th third sector to industry and academic perspectives. Hopefully for those of you who've never contributed to the Turing Way, but are planning to do that through the book dash, if there are some of you in this call, this would be an opportunity for you to become one of the acknowledged contributors. And um, yeah, the project has received many accolades, um, has influenced uh, policy um, through things just such as the Goldacre Review. Um, it has been cited by the mayor of London. Um, and a couple of years ago, it has won the award for uh, belonging from the uh, from Open UK. And that award sits very nicely in the Turing office next to a coffee machine in case some of you have seen it. Um, have I escaped? No. Um, so the reason why we're talking about um, GitHub, and we think like it's one of the most important um, aspects, um, well, not aspects, skills that one we need to have when uh, engaging, when contributing generally to the Turing Way community and others is because it does allow us to collaborate um, in a way where we can track contributions, in a way where we can um, we can see um, uh, what each what each individual um, has uh, contributed towards and so on. Um, and we're gonna go into a bit more detail. Um, probably most of you have heard about version control. Um, this, uh, this is a, a way that was set up particularly for um, code and software. Uh, to kind of like track the different versions, to kind of see who contributed to what, to be able to recover previous versions. And it is a very robust and rigorous log of changes to a file. Uh, and that is uh, without doing this kind of like renaming final, final, uh, v2, v5, and so on. Um, and it allows us to um, uh, define formalized ways where, uh, where we can work together. Uh, by doing different types of like um, kind of working in our local 
uh, in our local computers and then kind of like coming back together. Uh, and he helps us to kind of understand code, debug, and yeah, go through like different backup versions and backup as we edit. Um, to clarify the difference between Git and GitHub, uh, because you will hear both. Uh, Git is a version control system, the most widely used, and it is a free open source tool. Whereas GitHub is the hub of Git. It's one of the, uh, it's the most, I don't know if it's the most popular or a popular website for hosting and sharing Git repositories re uh, remotely. And uh, it offers a really nice web interface as well as um, an app. And it's pretty, um, yeah, pretty user-friendly to use. Um, the, you'll also probably hear the word repository quite a lot, and you can think of it as a folder, a directory. Um, people also call it a repo. It's essentially, the way I think of it is kind of like where I host a particular project. And sometimes a project can span across multiple repositories, but most often I would say people think of, um, of a project um, as um, residing in one particular repository with different file structures and so on. Um, and this is a really nice way to kind of think about the way that we um, we we have version control within different files. Um, and you can see here um, how these blobby uh, characters are kind of like committing with each um, as they are climbing further up the, uh, the cliff, um, how they are clipping in and each clipping in is a commit so that if they were to fall, they will go back to the last commit. And hopefully this is a fairly like visual and intuitive way to kind of illustrate this. And um, this is really helpful because also like it helps us to go back to previous versions. So it does show the kind of like journey, not just where we are in the final version or final destination. Yeah. Okay. No. Um, and we can see, um, yeah, through Git, uh, we can see like revisions and versions in real time uh, without, um, yeah, without necessarily like changing the file, but we can uh, we can see like the, the evolution and the timeline. Um, we can um, see how different um, uh, individuals have contributed. Um, as you see here, you have the different characters updating different things, and then they all come back together to the same uh, file. Um, okay, so GitHub as a platform is um, a piece of software. It's really useful uh, because it uh, helps us to um, host repositories uh, or projects online in the cloud. It helps us to work with um, contributors or collaborators. It provides a web interface for uh, version control. It is actually really, really good for project management and communication. It does have like all sorts of uh, discussion forums um, and issues that can be used for things like debugging things, but also for things like um, designing action lists. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really great for projects where people, groups of people uh, work together and this can be both private or and public. So for instance, the Turing way is completely public and anyone can kind of have access to, to see, um, to see the back end of, um, of the, of the GitHub. Um, so before we go into a few other like definitions uh, and things we kind of want to iron out, um, it would be great to um, create an account um, and then we'll do another exercise. So uh, if you can go to GitHub, actually I'll do this, I'll stop screen sharing and could you give me a hands up? Uh, thumbs up, an emoji, any emoji on uh, on Zoom if you do have an account already. Okay, quite a few of you have an account. The rocket, I love it. Okay. 
So we still have a few people who don't have an account, I assume. Uh, it looks to me like everybody, but I'm not sure I've seen Richard and Emily raising their hands who don't have an account. Uh, yep, I raised mine. Sorry, I was just slow. There's another Richard. Didn't uh, see the other Richard. <laughs> 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 the recording and screen share again. This is actually really great because it does save us some time. Um, okay, so if you can go to your um to the to your GitHub account, actually, I'll stop. Uh, Sorry. I can't. That's fine. Um, so if you can go to your GitHub account and then we will create a repository, a new repository. Um, I don't think it's mandatory that we call it friendly collab party, but this is a suggestion. Uh, and uh, then uh, this will be where we will do like a few other exercises during this session. Um, so actually, I think, is there more? Yes. Um, I do want to stop the recording a bit before passing on to Joanna. So, uh, I hope all of you have managed to create your repository and, um, or you're nearly there. So yeah, congratulations. Um, now you will see that each repository comes with a readme file and then you can add many, many other files there. And the, the main um, kind of yeah text language, scripting language used in GitHub is uh, Markdown. And We'll go through a quick exercise where you can add uh, more information about your project in the uh, Markdown file, in the README file, sorry, which is in uh, Markdown format. Um, but this, just as a re reminder for those of you who've never used this, it's a pretty easy um, markup language where essentially uh, you use certain things like hashtags, like um, um, asterisks um, to, uh, form, uh, to format the text. So it's a bit like kind of the metadata on top of the, on top of the text. Um, and it is really, really good for, um, yeah, kind of like sharing uh, ready formatted um, uh, text for the documents, papers, blogs, and so on. Um, I'm gonna send in the chat a great kind of like cheat sheet uh, with the main things that you need to know. Um, and we'll do a quick exercise where uh, you will go and you'll try to edit. So yeah, you can check this slide, which is I think slide 21, 20th or 21st. Um, <laughs> the thing that we'll do is, uh, we'll go under the readme file for the project and then we'll try to edit that. So you should see an edit button, I think it's top right. Um, and you can add a couple of sentences, something about your project uh, and then some um, names, IDs of your collaborators. Yeah, just add like a couple of sentences. Um, and try to use Markdown style. So maybe use a couple of bullet points, maybe a heading and anything else that you would find uh, useful. So I will just stop the sharing in the present. So um, in the second part of uh, this workshop, we're going to go over some uh, additional terms that you usually um, are confronted with when using Git. And we're also going to um, use uh, the commands on online in GitHub.
Um, so the terms that we are going to talk about is uh, committing, um, branching and forking, what a pull request is, and then merging. Um, yeah, and these terms are quite standard. So you might have heard them already uh, in relation to version, co version control. Um, and as we've previously like already discussed, we have this nice analogy with uh, climbing, which is actually really nice. I really I climbed myself. So um, this idea that you know um, a commit is basically a snapshot of your file with a message similar to you know like um, clicking in um, when climbing up, basically um, clicking in your quick draw, so that when you fall, basically or you lose your data, you only fall back to the last version of the file, and you can also um, by you know by clicking in your your rope, you can also see where you went, um, and uh, yeah. So commits are also like I said helpful because they don't only show your journey, uh, they they show your journey and not only the destination. So they actually show the development of the file um, with time. Um, and like on Git, um, com the commit uh, history will look something like this. Um, like I said, a commit is a snapshot of your file with a message that states basically describes the state of the file um, and uh, each of each like little um, yeah uh, messages here like is a commit um, they usually have like a, a hashtag so or a hash a number that uh, uh, is like a you know a checksum for this commit and then you can basically see um, you know the development of your file the whole history and you can also revert back to the status of the file. Um, that's a bit more difficult, but it's possible. Um, yeah, and again, this analogy um, uh, using with GitHub on a project is um, more obvious, safe, and streamlined. Um, and it uh, lets us focus on the science that we want to do compared to you know working without Git um, is more, uh, can be disorienting. And we often spend uh, too much time you know, sifting through past work to figure out where we are, what was the last version that we've been using. Um, and, and I think this analogy is really nice because if, if you climb, you know, and this guy has like the rope over the foot that's actually quite dangerous. <laughs> so this is, can be fatal. Um, yeah. Um, in addition, GitHub allows us not only to um, uh, track our work, but it can also help with uh, documentation. Um, GitHub is a massive uh, code repository, so you can also browse there for the work of others. Like we've already discussed, that they are public and private repositories, but the default state of a repository is public. So um, that means that anyone can actually see your code, and also you can see anyone's code. Um, and that allows you to, you know, just browse for code snippets and reuse them. Um, there's also a code review feature, so um, the Turing way, for example, for any uh, anything that you want to add to the Turing way, someone else needs to review it and to approve it. Um, and in general, there are also other features that we won't go too much into now, but um, that allow uh, project management. And yeah, it's quite useful. Um, uh, yeah, so this is for example another example that we can use uh, Git also to for project management, so there are also Kanban boards and more features. Um, yeah, so um, we've already had this little exercise where you edited um, the uh, README file, and I don't know whether uh, you have saved it, because if you saved, uh, so Git won't allow you to do that without committing it. Um, so the task that we are actually going to do now is create your first commit. So um, you should have already edited the readme file, and I might actually do that with you. So this is, uh, you should be able, to, can you see my, my GitHub account now? Yeah, cool. So this is my GitHub account. I'm just going to redo what you guys have done, which is create uh, a repository. Um, and then you just did this exercise with working with Markdown here. Um, but um, yeah, so the idea with Git is really that it forces you to commit, so you won't be able to save this 
at all without committing, which is basically creating a snapshot of the file with some message. So in order to save this on Git, you would have to hit this green button, um, commit changes. And then it forces you to create a little message saying what you've done. So I just... And then you need to hit commit. And then uh, you've changed the file. And then if you go into, uh, where is it, history? Yeah, so if he, it shows you basically what you've done, what you've added, and there's also, there should be, where's the history? There's the history. So you now started with this initial commit, which is the creation of your repository, and you see you've added a snap, another snapshot of your file. So this would build this commit history. Um, so I'll give you some <laughs> time now to just do that, um, create your first commit. And maybe you can give a reaction when you've done that. See some thumbs there. Oh, I think um, we might move on or do you, do you guys need more time? No, they are still good thumbs. Okay, I'll still wait. Okay, um, so then um, basically this is this committing is basically the, the way how you add to a file on GitHub. Um, so the really nice, a really nice feature of Git is that um, you can also uh, create different versions of a file. Um, and this is done with a feature called branching. Um, so branch is a separate path in the same repo where you can experiment with changes without altering the main project. You can decide to keep or discard, discard those changes later within your project space. And this is kind of illustrated here. So this is the, you know, where you initialize your repository, then you make your first commit, and then you create one branch um, where you do make some changes, for example, a bug, bug fix, and then you have another branch where you don't make changes or make other changes. I'll, I'll show you that as well, how you can do that on Git. Um, so we are in our repository here. And you go to the code button. And under the code button, you have this little um, button here that says main. So each repository is always initialized um, with a main branch. That's the first branch that you have. You can click on that. And then you can find or create a branch. And then you can write test. And it already suggests you create branch test from main. So you click that. And now it already switches you to test. Um, and it also tells you, this is just now a copy of the main branch. Um, it tells you this branch is up to date with main because it's literally just a copy. Um, I'll give you some time to do that. And if you could give me a quick reaction once you've done that. Or if there are any questions, just let me know. Then we can pause the recording and, and discuss it if necessary. Which is um, creating. So now you've been working in our own repository, but the, we've, we've discussed that there are many repositories out there in GitHub. And Fork is creating a copy of someone else's entire um, project or repository into your own account. Um, and this makes this repository editable for you. So you can work on it independently. Um, in contrast to you know, other repositories that are owned by other people, um, you don't need permission to work on your local copy of this repository. 
um, and you can keep your copy separate um, or merge it with their changes. Um, and this is really useful. If, for example, you find some really nice code, you might need that for your project. Um, you just copy it into your account. You can change it and it can develop completely independently of what this other per person does. And um, also, you know, this, this person can see that you've forked their repository, but they might not care or, you know, they might never know. It will not affect their repository ever unless you want to merge it back. Um, and in case you want to, to, to work on someone's code, that's the way to do it. Basically, you fork someone else's repository, work on it, and then merge it back into, into the, the main account. But we'll see that in a second. Um, and this is here um, an illustration. So basically, this would be my, you know, this would be my personal, it would be my username and my personal copy. And then you make a fork um, into a, no, that, that will be the, 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 for example, the Turing way, and then you make a fork into your personal report, into your personal account. Um, and in contrast to a branch, so the fork that you make contains all the branches, or you know, of the original account. Um, so basically, branches are within an account. Forking means making a whole copy of of the original repository. And um, we want you to actually contribute to the Turing way um today so what you're going to do is you're going to uh fork the Turing way repo um so you navigate to i'll show you um so you go to your account um and up here in the search bar um you delete all of this and search for the Turing way um so like it, it's actually the Turing way so for me it pops up here but you click on that um, and then you go to um, this particular repository, the Turing way. Click on that. Don't allow me. No, okay. Um, and now you hit this button up here, fork. You can see actually a lot of people have already forked this repository because it's the Turing way and pe many people have contributed. So you click on that one. And then here, choose an owner. Um, I, I, I am in many organizations, so, but for you only your account should come up here. Um, I myself can't fork the repository because I've already forked it, but you just pick yourself. I think it should come up for you if you're not in any other organizations. Um, so it's just you here and then you hit create fork. And then what should happen is that you get something like, oh, where can I find my fork? That's going to be painful because there are many forks. Oh, I have to do this in a different way. Uh, yeah, here, here's my fork. So you should have basically the Turing way, like here in the in the top, and then it tells you forked from the Turing way, the Turing way. But it's, the, the repository should be now your account name, the Turing way, because it's basically a fork in your account. Um, and um, in contrast to this, you know, or, or, original repository, you can now edit this one because it's a copy. Um, and what we want you to do is to go to workshops um, and to GitHub workshops and to this 2023 May intro .md. Uh, no, that's not the one, the 2024. Where's the 2024 one? Did I, oh, I did not pull this, right? Did I not pull this, maybe? Where is the 2024? Doesn't look like it's there. Oh yeah, because it's in my, because it's my fork. I did not take my fork. It should be in the Turing Way fork. So if you, if you copy it, let me go back to the Turing Way fork, uh, to the Turing Way. So if you yeah, fork I it, yeah, because I didn't update. I, I'm, yeah, this one. So it should be in your local copy. It's just I didn't update my my fork. So you go in here. As well. Yeah. And then you click on edit and you add your name. And then you commit it, um, basically. Um, first of all, you commit it. And that means that you add the name to um, the uh, your fork of the Turing way, first of all. So I, I'll give you some time to do that. And I'll also give you maybe the name of this thing again. 
Let me get that. Oops. Um, yep. Yeah. So this is where you go to. So workshops, GitHub workshop 2024, May intro. And add your name. And can you let me know um, once you've done that? Um, sorry, but where where should we add the name? I've yep. reached the page, the ND, but I missed yep. the last bit. Yes. yes. So you can either, um, you can, they should also be able to do it on the main repo, right? They don't need to make a creator fork. Do they need to create a fork? So you go to, um, so, uh, so I, I reached 2024 May intro MD. Yeah. So yeah. workshops. I'll I'll do it with you. Um good old workshops. That's the wrong one. Why is it the wrong one? Because it's the 2020. The 2024 May intro should be empty. Yeah. Then you click the edit this file. Oh, okay. And then you add your name. Okay, thank you very much. And then you need to commit changes um, because it won't let you save it without committing it so i just leave this and uh, propose change yeah um thank you very much yeah i think yes sarah i think if you had forked it then if you have forked it, you should be able to commit it, <coughs> and that's good. But then they can't see the, the file, the 2024 MD, because it hasn't been updated. It ha it should be. It should be in the main in the main repo. It's just not in my fork. Because I created the I created it in the main repo. Oh, what are you talking about now? I think it's the same what you've done that other people have done. Like Sarah is mentioning in the chat that she can, uh, she can only see the 2023 one, which is probably because um, she followed the repo a while back. Ah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if you, if you, then you, then if you have already a fork of the repository, then you go to the, um, abandon your fork. <laughs> Go to the, the Turing way, like to the, the Turing way, the Turing way, and create a pull request there. So go to the Turing way, the Turing way, to workshops, GitHub workshops, May 2023 intro, and edit this file. And then if you commit, basically, with, with the commit, you create a, a pull request, as I probably did. Where is my pull request? Um, and then because the Turing way has, so for those of you who have created a fork and, um, edit the name there, we'll leave it here and, and come back to that later. For those of you who created it in the Turing way, um, we can already see that we cannot, so we have not created a pull request. So basically we are request, we cannot merge this directly because, um, this is basically not our repository. And what happens is we're creating a pull request. So we're asking um, the main repository to uh, pull these changes in right away. Um, and the Turing way has a policy that um, someone else has to review it, um, even if you have rights to you know, write in the Turing way, basically. So we see here that, uh, Richard has also created a pull request and I can now review this. Okay, I think I can review his one, his pull request, right? Probably can't, yeah. Um, can I do this? Review. Mm. Let me see. 
I think you may have to work wait for the CI to finish and uh, that work. might be. Yeah, that's shouldn't. Yep. Yep. So there are also some checks that are running, but then I can't review my own pull request. I can only review probably Rich's pull request because yeah. So for those of you who've created a fork, um, it's a bit more you should have been able to merge your pull request into your own fork. You should have been able to commit it, but you now need to create a pull request to the upstream repository, which um actually that was not so smart because, oh, well, it should be okay. Um, and I cannot demo this because I already have a fork. But um, you should be, like if you go now to your um, fork, it should tell you that um, your fork is one commit ahead of the Turing way. And you should be able to just click this button and compare and pull request and just accept everything that is in there. And then you should also be able to create a pull request. Can you try that and let me know whether that works? Yeah, there are a couple of really nice pull requests. Lovely. Lovely. So now um, the really nasty thing is that you all guys have probably edit, edited the first line, um, which means that we are going to have something that is very common and very not so cool on GitHub, um, which is a um, uh, uh, merge conflict. Because um, yeah, we all tried to edit the first line. So we have to decide what actually should be on the first line. Uh, let me see whether I can now accept this. Ah, oh, yeah, now it allows me to add my review. So this is fine because Richard was the first one who, um, who edited this line. So goes from nothing to his name. So I can review these changes. These changes, like important is also if you review something, you can, don't just comment, but click approve. Um, let me just pull that out of the way. Yes. And then submit review. And if I've approved it, it should um, be able to... Um, Merge. Yay. So we've merged our first name into this file. And now we would have to go through all of them and add your add. And I'll just show you the, the problem that we are going to have here. Um, can I uh, add my review? Let's go have to go back. Yeah. Oh, it's also the first line, but that should uh, it looks good. Yeah, and now it tells me this branch has conflicts that must be resolved because uh, Ahmed also tried to edit the first line, but we have already Richard's name there. So what you then in this case do, you go to resolve conflicts and it tells you, it shows you that two different names are competing for the first line and you just have to manually edit this. 
So this is, we decide that this is how it's going to look. Yeah, and if we now go to um, the poll, let's go back to, um, where are we? Workshops. <coughs> where is it? Uh, it should be there. Where's the second one? Maybe it takes a while. Did I merge it? Ah, I just approved it. I didn't merge it properly. It did, didn't I? I think you approved without merging. Yeah, okay, now it's merged. If we're now going back to workshops. Did a workshop? Yeah, I didn't put the uh, the break for whatever reason, but now we have the two names and now I would have to basically do that with all your, your names, um, because there will all be merge conflicts on the first line. Um, but yeah, so that's basically what we've done. We've, um, you forked the repository, you made some changes to your local fork, you pushed it back to the main repository and someone else has to approve that now. Um, and yeah. Uh, let's go. Um, yeah, so so we've gone through that. Um, the Turing way has this policy that you need to review every single change that is pushed into the main repository. Um, you always have to make sure if you're, you know, don't just comment, but approve it. Um, and if you're working on at the book dash, I think you will get at least some basic rights. So you should be able to review stuff. Um, or you will be asked to review your stuff, make sure you click approve, not only comment, because comment is not enough. So, um, yep. Yeah. And um, the last thing I just wanted to talk about is issues. Um, so we've now seen um, commits, we've seen forks, we've seen branches. Um, issues is uh, basically just little notes that you can leave um, for other developers, um, you can report bugs and errors and propose a new idea, um, save notes or invite discussions um, and issues. Uh, you create using this button here. Um, you see uh, the Turing way uses issues quite a bit. Um, if you go on that, you see that people proposed um, se several things um, also related to the book dash that is coming up. Um, and if you create want to create a new issue, you click on this new issue button. Um, and the Turing way gives you already a couple of templates for issues, but you can also just create a general issue. Um, and you would click one of these buttons and then just type in markdown language um, what your your um, what your issue is basically. Um, and yeah, so um, in issues, you basically just discuss new ideas um, for possible changes. Um, and usually you do that before you make a pull request. Um, so that's good practice to just let people know that you will that you're trying to work on something. And then with the pull request, you can actually propose the changes um, and then merge them into the project. Um, and uh, different contributors can see what you are going uh, to work on and offer help and just share, share thoughts or learn from your work. Um, and uh, it's good practice to provide sufficient details, respond patiently, accept constructive feedback and invite collaboration. Yeah, and um, the hours, it's almost the hour and we're actually done. So you've made your first commit, um, you've learned about issues, you've created a branch, um, you've created a pull request and you've merged your pull request or, you know, at least like you created a pull request, I, I'll merge all of those. <laughs> Uh, later. Um, yeah, so there's some more stuff. You should have the slides um, that you can go over in your own time. Um, it's basically working on your own fork, um, for example, of the Turing way. But maybe you can um, you can read through that in your own time. 
And I would take maybe the last minute and a half if there are like any questions or any issues that you ran into um, or also provide, uh, if you want to provide feedback, we would also be happy about that. <laughs>